important because it helps you hold your head up, helps you hold your head high and feel proud of yourself and what you can do. It gives you the courage to try new things. If you don't have the power to believe in yourself, you probably won't even try something new. But it lets you respect yourself, even when you make mistakes. And you re when you respect yourself, adults and kids, actually, too, usually respect you. Good. Now, if you had one secret to give about overcoming low self-esteem, what would it be? We're going to do better than that. We're going to give you two secrets. A big secret and a secret process, you, and a secret process that you can do right now. First. First, please consider this. This is not immediately obvious, but babies don't see themselves in a good or bad way. They don't think I'm great when they let out a big burp or worry, oh no, this diaper makes my backside look too big and my legs look too weird. Babies don't do that. And we're, we're sharing this with you because you were not born in a certain way with low self-esteem. But as, as you grew older and you start having a role in developing your own self-esteem, then you start adopting certain beliefs about yourself. Achievements like getting a good grade on a test or making the all-star soccer team are things kids can be proud of. So are having a good sense of humor or having good friends. It's all part of us learning how to see ourselves in a certain way and eventually to understand that we are good enough, that yes. we're valuable. And each of us in our own way is valuable. And to feel proud of what we've done and to be confident there's a lot more and a lot more successes that we can achieve. However your past may have been. To begin to, to see yourself and your self-esteem problems, you need to understand first consciously some things. First of all, you don't get self-esteem from someone else. It's not handed to you on a platter. No. We don't give it to you like that. If you suffer of low self-esteem, you already know that in order to create it in your life, you have to have a particular attitude towards success. Whenever you succeed at something, what do you do? If you have low self-esteem, immediately you reduce the value of what you've done to nothing. Yep. Or even worse, you attribute it to someone else or something else. Oh, well, it wasn't me. It was no, just good luck. It was just because it was good luck. Or... Yeah, you might say it's an unexpected stroke of good luck or a lucky coincidence or maybe the, someone else who worked in the background helped you out. Yes. You know already that it's difficult for you to accept the success. In many cultures where modesty is considered a high virtue, it's also politically incorrect to say, I've done a good job. You will most likely to be considered selfish or, or egocentric. So, next time you have done a decently good job, when you are tempted to produce that behavior, why don't you catch yourself in the act and begin to accept the credit for your success? Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? It's very simple. Instead of saying, this is a good job, say, I've done a good job. Ooh, really? Yeah. Easier said than done. If you're really good at low self-esteem, I bet you just thought, the thought, just the thought of saying these words makes your throat cringe. Because deep down you don't believe it, right? And you may think, but I have messed up so many times in the past. I've never been good enough. And I have so many experiences in the past that confirm that. And maybe you did. Maybe you have. Or maybe you just thought you did because of your low self-esteem problem. Maybe. And even if you succeeded in some things, you certainly couldn't see your success because you have low self-esteem. In which case, by the way, you're playing a catch-22. You cannot imagine success because you don't believe it. And you can't succeed because you can't believe it. Because and you've you never been successful. believe it because you haven't been successful and, and so on and so forth, you know, right? It's just a loop. Yes. It's just a loop. Yes. So, so what you need to do is step out of this Catch-22 game you're playing. Here's the first step. Would you agree that there is a major difference between the statements, I am a failure and I have failed in the past? Yes, I, can, I would agree. I mean, can we agree? We can agree. I think so. But failing is a process. It's something you do, not who you are. We've all failed in the past, but when you say, I am a failure, you become the failure, or it becomes you. So you're identifying yourself with failure. It becomes an, your identity. But as Adriana said, failing is a process. It's something that people do, I think it's worth repeating, and it's not what people are. And we have it on good authority that whatever you think you are, you're much more than that. So here's a little process for you. Think of it right now and answer this question. Who are you? Go ahead, give, give yourself an answer. Do it now. Who are you? Good. Do you have a word? You must come up with a word that is the answer to the question. Who are you? Otherwise, the process won't work. Come up, come up with it. Make sure you have a any, word. Any word will do. Just come up with a word. Let's say you said, I'm John, or I'm a student, or I'm a woman, or I'm a mother, or I'm a carpenter. Whatever, yeah? Now, let us ask you this question. Is that all you think you are? Think of it. Is that all you think you are? 
Obviously not. Obviously not. So who are you that's not the word you came up with? Do you have a new word? Now you should come up with a new word. Do you have a new word? You must come up with a new word that is the answer to the previous question of who are you. So do that now. Good. So here's a new question for you. Who are you that's not the last word you came up with? Who are you that's not the last word you came up with? Got a new word? Good. Good. You have to get Good. a new word. Yeah. yeah. Get and a new word. Make sure you get a new word, yeah? And beyond the word you came up with, is that all you are? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just think of it. Who are you, Who are you? that's more than the last word you just said? You do know you're more than that, don't you? I mean, you Who must... are you that's more than that? Sure. Do this process at least ten more times. Ten more times, or until you run out of words. Asking yourself the question, who am I, who am I? that's more than the last word you used to describe yourself? And when you're done, take the last word you came up with, and looking at that last word, ask yourself, how do I know I am... The very last word you came up the with. The very last word you came up with. I'll make sure you do it at least ten more times. Yeah? Just rewind this a little bit and go back and look at it again if you need to. Good. Now, see, understanding consciously is easy. But, and here is the big secret. The process we've done before is, is a little secret. Here's the big secret. Here's the big secret. The problem of low self-esteem is, is not a problem of your conscious mind only. Uh, your conscious mind is the mind that you think with when you say, I am like this. It's your logical, reasonable, the part of you, yeah? But you can't solve this problem only with your conscious mind's understanding. The problem is how your unconscious mind has stored your unconscious beliefs about yourself. And in order for you to know that you have low self-esteem, you also have to know a lot of other bad things about yourself, and you need to ignore all the good things about yourself. Those beliefs that make us not feel good enough, and, and we don't even know why sometimes, because they're all unconscious. This is why in our NLP coaching trainings and seminars, we work with the unconscious mind. And we work with the unconscious mind to assist you in letting go of what's lurking beneath the level of being conscious. In order to restore a healthy self-esteem level for yourself, you have to let go of all the beliefs from the past that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're too shy, that you can't achieve anything else on your own. You, you get the idea. You have to let go of all those beliefs and replace them with healthy beliefs, like you've always done the best you can with the resources you have available at the time. That's, that's a healthy belief. But you might say, I don't think a lot of, of, of the past. I don't dwell on the past. I don't spend time thinking about my experiences from the past. I am done with the past. I came to grips with it a long time ago. I understand my past. I, I, I let it go. Well, we beg to differ. If you still suffer of low self-esteem, and you know well that you will remember for the rest of your life the frustration and sadness and shame and hurt that you experienced when your mom or dad scolded you, and told you you'll never amount to anything, or the teacher that made fun of you and your, cla and your classmates laughed at you, or maybe when your girlfriend or boyfriend made you feel like a failure and maybe you felt humiliated. You remember those very well, and as long as you can still feel that these events bother you and give you sour feelings when you go back and talk about them, then you're not done. No, you're not done. But think of it, what if all those sour and negative feelings and beliefs you made about yourself as a result of those experiences could really disappear, such that you can revisit the memories and feel good about yourself, in spite of all that happened. How would you be then? Would you still suffer of low self-esteem? <laughs> After all your negative beliefs about yourself are gone and replaced with positive beliefs? No, 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 we're not talking about affirmations here. Those don't do the trick, by the way. I bet you could be a different person completely and your life would be different. You could finally feel like you're getting for the first time the respect and appreciation you deserve just because you are you. Good. What are some of the common problems that people experience in trying to overcome low self-esteem? Not being true to themselves, not taking action, not following through, falling back into the comfortable old ways, and one of the major problems is not knowing what to do. Yeah, that's, that's true. One of the major problems is that people do not know what to do. But here, here's the good news. When you don't know what to do or how to proceed, you can call our office to ask for free advice and coaching. Yes, I did say free. All people who are enrolled or have finished any of our major trainings are eligible for free coaching forever from our expert NLP coaching trainers in the office. 
So, good. But some people might think that this is all too good to be true. What's the catch? Uh, sure there's a catch. Of course there's a catch. There's always a catch. Here's the catch. You need to be at the, at the point where you're no longer willing to put up with lack of anything in your life. With lack of anything in your business. And you're ready to stop tolerating being unhappy and dissatisfied. In other words, you need to be willing to change. You need to be willing to give up your comfortable but not satisfied life, your old comfortable but <clears throat> struggling ways of doing things. You need to be willing to begin to notice that the only thing between you and your current level of success and a breakthrough and accomplishment is your lack of self-confidence and you're committed to breaking through that limitation now. Right, so what sort of things can someone do to stay on top? Well, you need to learn how to refuse to indulge in self-criticism. That's one of the things. We agree that it's easier to talk about this than do it, unless you know how to focus all your thoughts toward what you want, and only what you want. There's a process that we teach which shows you how much of your thinking goes toward what you want, and how much toward what you don't want. We teach this process and how to change what you don't want so it becomes exactly what do you want? It would take too long in this interview to share that information with you and we don't have a, all day to talk about how to overcome low self-esteem. But if you decide to take a training or a seminar from us, you'll learn this process easily and then you'll be in control of your own thoughts and you'll be in control of your own self-esteem. And your thoughts, by the way, don't come to you from somewhere else. They may seem like they do, but they really come from but inside But they do. You. you create them all the time inside your head. And you need to learn how to create positive thoughts. And no, we don't refer to the power of positive thinking. Positive thinking is superficial. You need to learn consciously and unconsciously to focus only on what you want so that you can create it. Positive thinking can be useful in that it challenges you to form a different view on things. However, most of the time it just takes the form of arguing with yourself. And if it worked, you would have overcome already your problem with low self-esteem. To change your self-image and improve low improve low self-esteem, you need to believe differently about yourself and not just repeat platitudes of how, how great you are. That's not enough. And this is what we do. We give you the how to change your beliefs, to get rid of beliefs which disempower you and install beliefs which are totally empowering for you. We show you how to do that so that you automatically begin to remember that you're also important, even if you don't believe it yet, that you're as important as all other human beings that you deserve to change this problem that bugs you for such a long time. And literally, we've seen thousands and thousands of people from all walks of life, from all over the world, who are cursed with this problem of having low self-esteem and never feeling good. And we've, we can, we've shown them how to change that and how to regain hope and happiness and joy and respect in their lives like never before. And the secret of creating your future seminar has been sold also on CDs and initially tapes to literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It has been so successful assisting people to completely let go of their lack of self-esteem that it has been copied by many other presenters who do it under a different name. It's a hugely successful process. And the best part is that the lack of self-esteem never returns. So we had a guy come and see us from Germany. And he was a very successful businessman. He was getting his doctorate in, in business. Uh, he had a very successful company, he was a good looking guy, and he had terrible, terrible self-esteem. So we, 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 we got together with him, and come to find out, his father, when he was alive, uh, ragged on him all the time. All, every hour he was awake. And when his father died, he internalized that part. So he internalized his father inside of him, and, and he did a better job of ragging on himself than his father could have ever done. We saw him for approximately an hour and a half or two hours, and when he was done, he had no low self-esteem, and his father wasn't ragging on him anymore. He was totally integrated and whole, and his self-esteem problems had totally disappeared. And he realized who he was. He realized who he was for himself was worthy, and he became confident that what he was doing was fine. So we gave you that example because if this guy has done it, so can you. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's something you can do, and you can do easily. And you need to remember one thing. All people are important, but you are one of these all people. And you need to discover that you are one of these all people. You need to learn to discover what you want, what are your values, what are your beliefs, what are your needs and desires, both consciously and unconsciously. And we're not talking about selfishness. We're talking about a healthy self-confidence and healthy self-esteem. You deserve to live life as you want. Great. Where can people find out more information about overcoming low self-esteem? Well, one place is www.nlpcoaching.com. That's on the bottom of the screen. 
and people can contact us at the phone numbers on the screen.